Your argument make no sense. The only thing that should followed is the word of God. The hadith, which is the saying of Muhammad and his companions, and sirah, which is biography of Muhammad, are main made books because neither says Quran says it inspired by God nor do it contents are considered as 100% reliable evident from the fact hadiths are categorized as authentic, good and weak. Alright, so that's the claim of this comment in response to what I have stated earlier. Basically, his main thing is you should only follow the word of God while the hadith and the sirah are main made. So he claim. Right, and just so uh, there are several more detail here. And then he said, where Bible is approved and attested by Quran as the word of God and a reliable source. Okay, so this is, I have addressed this so many times before to refute such a claim uh, that as if, because I'm not sure why they still think, I'm not sure whether they think or they just want to use this against Muslim regardless of it, it is, has been refuted so many times before, right? Um, but anyway, so we'll focus on his statement that only God's word or word of God should be followed while hadith and sirah is just, you know, male made. So to that, my reply is, okay, so I quoted what he said. The only thing that should uh, followed okay there are some missing word in his own original statement the only thing that should be followed is the word of god so i ask if god instruct us to follow the prophet should we do it or not right so because if you say and if you agree and we are in agreement that we should follow the word of god so if god say follow my prophet should we follow or not because i want to start there before we go to the hadith because if you cannot establish this one first uh, discussion further will not have an eating point because we are talking about different thing and then he suddenly replied Quran 4 59 69 I'm not sure if this is two verse or from 59 until 69 are talking about believing in the claims of Muhammad that he is the messenger of God and accepting Quran as the word of God. It is not explicitly saying about hadith. Okay, this is his own interpretation of the verse. We will have a look at the verse afterwards. The, con the contradictions in hadith, existence of various version, what do you mean by version? And its classification as authentic and inauthentic shows it is not reliable. Okay, so this statement make me wonder whether he even understand what he's talking about when he is referring to the hadith because if you say this in terms of for example the bible then it makes sense right for example the bible claimed to be something as a book and then you say oh this part of the book is reliable this part of the book is not reliable so as a package it becomes a question right so is this book reliable or not because you clearly see that some of this paragraph is reliable this paragraph is not authentic this paragraph is authentic right so so what is this book then but hadith doesn't come as a book even though you have now the collection of the book but it come individually right it's not like a book it hadith is individual hadith there's the matan of the hadith and the narration of the hadith and each stand on its own so i'm not sure whether he understand it or not and i hope you understand this but if you don't feel free to ask so so that you you know understand and do not make assumption uh, uh, okay to be fair normally we assume other things is fam the same as what we used to the things that we are used to so previously i assumed the bible is an equivalent to the quran so when i interact with a christian i use the standard of the quran on the bible which is not fair because the quran claim to be the word of god while the bible claim to be word of human being inspired by God. So obviously the benchmark is not the same. So if I force the benchmark of the Quran on the Bible, it's not fair because it doesn't even claim to be the same level of the Quran, meaning the claim level, right? 
Um, so again, so when you go to the hadith, do you understand what the hadith claim to be? Right? If you assume any book of hadith as if it claimed to be like the Bible, then you do not understand the claim in the first place. Right? So, but from my personal experience, we have to be humble enough to ask, okay, what, what, what is it claiming to be? And then I understand, oh, okay, I thought the Bible claimed to be something like the Quran, but it, it doesn't even claim that. So I have to judge it based on its own claim, right? Anyway, so to this, this is my reply. This is the, where is it? Yeah, this is the latest one. I would like to settle the first basis first. Because he already see, go into the hadiths, etc. So I want to avoid confusion. And I asked initially, if God say that we should follow the Prophet, do you agree that we should follow? As God instruct to follow the Prophet, hence we follow the Prophet, not because of the Prophet himself, but because that is the instruction from God. So, and he actually cited several of the verses himself. So I start there. So this is one of the verses that he cited, 5 for uh, 59 oh you who have believed that ya ayuhal ladzina amanu atiu Allah wa atiu rasul wa ulil amri minkum so that's the original uh, verse right and this is the translation right oh you who have believed obey Allah and obey the messenger and those in authority among you now in 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 discussion the Quran the word selection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very important right so for example here in the translation, you can detect it maybe. Ati Allah, okay. Wa ati wa ati Rasul, wa ulil amri minkum. So there's there's a discussion. Why Allah say ati Allah, ati Rasul, and there's no ati ulil amri, right? Why is it ati Rasul wa ulil amri, right? So um, it's not like obi Allah, obi Rasul, obi ulil amri. No, obi Allah, obi Rasul, and ulil amri, right? So there's a discussion. So for those who keep accusing you are oh you keep running away and say you have to know the language no because the the word selection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is precisely you know tailored to what message exactly that Allah want us to to hold on to so that's why we always go back to the original language because when we translate and then translate again something tend to be missing because of not every language have the same equivalent etc right anyway but here our focus here is Allah says ati Allah obey Allah and wa ati rasul obey rasul so obey the messenger and if you disagree of anything refer to Allah and the messenger if you believe in the Allah and the last day this is the best way and the best in result so because we have uh, Iman, we have believed in Allah and the Judgment Day. That's why we follow the instruction. And the instruction is, obey Allah, obey the Messenger. And if you have any disagreement, go back to Allah and the Messenger. Right? So, that's number one. So, it is Allah, it's God that put the Prophet in a certain position where um, that's why we obey the instruction of the Messenger because the Messenger we know for sure is acting is saying in accordance to command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is not making things up himself. Alright. And that's, uh, even that is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran. Right? It's not like I'm, I'm, I'm making this thing up. We can go back in all, all of the verses if you wish. Now, next verse that I cited, 465. Because uh, in his message is 59 and 69, right? So I'm not using his verse because I'm just using a different verse. Just a selection of few to highlight certain things. But no, by your Lord, they will not truly believe until they make you, O Muhammad, judge concerning that over which they dispute among themselves and then find within themselves no con discomfort from what you have judged and submit in uh, full willing submission right so allah attach our acceptance to the judgment of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the belief in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right so we are not really believers of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
if we haven't willingly accept the judge of uh, Rasul Islam in the area of dispute among us, right? So, of course, in terms of application, we can say that this is obviously an application during the lifetime of Prophet, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. But I'm just saying the concept here, where Allah SWT is the one that put the Prophet in a certain position with regarding certain concept, uh, context, right? And the third verse that I just want to highlight in this short comment, 33.21 There has certainly been for you in the Messenger of Allah an excellent pattern, uh, example to be followed. For anyone whose hope is in Allah and the last day, and who remember Allah often. Right. So, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ Right? So, th that's the verse, right? the original verse, the actual verse. This is the translation, right? So, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ So, for us, Allah have given for us uh, the best of example in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That is for our time, right? So the previous Prophet is the best of example in their time, um, and for now we have the best of example in Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this this imply uswatun hasana, meaning that for us to try to emulate, right? For us to make an example of. So all these three is. Three examples of many verses that indicate that we follow, we obey, we make him as an example for us to follow, uh, we accept his judgment, etc. Right? Why? Not not because purely because we respect him, but because it is command of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala on us, and we accept as servant of Allah as the creation. To the Creator, when the Creator say, "This is my command, follow this Prophet," we submit. All right. So that's the first baseline that we have to understand as Muslim. It's not like because we, I don't know, we see that human being and we say, "Wow," and then we follow blindly or we make him what he's him he's not. It is because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "This is my command, follow this person." We follow, we submit. All right. There are some, these are some exam, uh, sorry. These are some samples of Quranic verses that give the foundation in terms of how our relationship with the Prophet. Right. So, how do I see Prophet Muhammad SAW? It is based on what Allah have commanded me to be with relationship with Muhammad SAW. I assume you don't have the issue with this concept. Next, we move on to the hadith, right? Because he keep on saying about the hadith, so I want to first establish the baseline first. Okay, first we can can we accept that Allah subhanahu wa taala, we submit to Allah. That's number one. We agree. We already agree. Number two, Allah is the one that put the prophet as our uh, as an example to follow, etc. As we have covered, so we do it in our submission to God. So if we have sub, uh, uh, established this, then we go to hadith, right? Given that, okay, given that we live in a time where the prophet is no longer with us, there must be a way for us to access the commands, the rulings, the examples of the prophet. So I'm using uh, the verses of the Quran. Of Allah SWT command to us, we have to follow the example, etc. Right? So, how do we access this when we are living now? Or much later than the time of Prophet Muhammad SAW. So, this is where, because we, went, we want to access those teachings, those examples, right? Here, we access the sayings and actions of the Prophet SAW based on what was conveyed and relayed by those listened observed saw the prophet in action or uh, saw his speech or listen of his speech and this is hadith right when someone says prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam did this or say this where do you get it i heard it from this guy and this guy got it from that one and that that that, that. and that person actually listened directly 
from Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that is an example of hadith, one individual hadith. There's count, there's a vast number of hadith, right? Even the Imam Al Shaf, uh, no, sorry, Imam Al Bukhari, Imam Muslim. If you go to the biography, the stories, how many hundred of thousand of hadith that they memorize, right? Individual hadith. So that is an example of hadith. Of course. Of course, given that we need to differentiate between the what is authentic from the Prophet and what is otherwise. Okay, so there are many hadiths. This guy says, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do this. Okay, where do you get this from? Okay, that is the chain of narration. Uh, he says, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did this or say this. Where do you get it from? Or that chain of, narr chain of narration, etc. Right? So there's hundreds of thousands of hadiths. We want to act upon what is authentic only. This is where the evaluation of the authenticity comes in. When you say Sahih, Da'if, etc. It is this process of evaluating the Hadith. So given that we need to differentiate between what is authentic from the Prophet and what is otherwise not authentic or questionable etc. Either made up, so otherwise maybe some people simply made up something, right? Oh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says this, where do you get it from? And it's proven to be false claim etc. Or have a certain level of doubt or lack of confidence for example. Okay, so this is the chain of command. But this guy and this guy do not actually meet each other because this guy live over here, this guy live over there and there's no overlap between them so it is questionable this chain of command or oh, this chain of command seems to be linked but this guy here is known to be forgetful etc right so that is al murijal etc right in the science of hadith that is where the grading of the hadith comes into the picture hence the science of hadith including al murijal for instance right so al murijal is basically you evaluate each individuals their character, their memory, where, how, etc. Right about each individuals. Hope that clarifies the matter. Right. So, understanding this, understanding that ah, oh, there's a collection of only Sahih hadith. Bukhari have the because Bukhari, Muslim, etc. Have a, a compilation of various hadith, while there's a specific com uh, compilation of this is compiling only Sahih hadith. For example, right, and then Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim. So it is to make it easy for those who comes later that this is already filtered. If you want to only refer to the Sahih Hadith, this is the book. For example, right. So yeah, if you understand all of this, you do not, you know, throw a oh, Hadith because just something is Ba'if etc. The whole thing you throw out. No. You understand? Ah, oh, okay. That's why we have the confidence on the Sahih Hadith because it has been evaluated thoroughly with a science of Hadith. Meaning, go, go into Google Science of Hadith and look it for yourself what it entails. Right? So, it doesn't make you throw out Hadith entirely. It makes you have one understanding why because from the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to do it, we have to find what is the actual sayings and action of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then we have hadith, but we want only the authentic one. We don't just grab everything and act on it, even though some might not be authentic, some might be purely made up, etc. Right? So we want the authentic one. So then we find the hadith and make sure it is uh, vetted and then just stick to the sahih hadith. That is oversimplified of the full uh, picture but hopefully for those who are new to this you get the idea right and the point made by this guy hopefully is addressed so hope that clarifies the matter thank you for watching see you next time